By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are bringing you magic from the Dwarven Warriors Cup. This is an event held in the Netherlands and uh, here they celebrate the earliest sets of magic alpha and beta. In this tournament only cards from the alpha and beta expansion are allowed. So it's really sticking to those earliest core sets of Magic the Gathering. And in this match, this is a round one match. We're going to see Edo, who's on black and green, and he's got a deck with cards like Llanowar Elves, uh, Berserks, uh, he's got Juggernauts that goes fantastically with the Berserks, but he also has some control elements like Hypnotic Spectre and Royal Assassin in his deck. So overall, this looks like a very strong brew, and he's taking on Tom, and Tom is bringing a pink weenie deck to the table, but I'm tempted to maybe call it even a Sly deck, uh, because he's got a really nice build-up. Turn one Savannah Alliance, possibly, then turn two into Iron Claw Orcs, then into Granite Gargoyle. And I'm not sure if he's playing with Dragon Wells, but that would be a really nice four drop for him. And then when we look at his spells, he's playing with, of course, with Fireballs and with Lightning Bolts, so he's got that whole direct damage package. So, I mean, it's going to be a tough match here for both of these players, so it could be very close. Let's go over to the action. And here we are, round number one, ready for action. Look at that, Edo casting a Lunar Elves turn one. Great start for him. Boom, there's the response from Tom. Quick lightning bolt, beautiful. Look at that black bordered stuff here, hitting the board. There's a swamp by Edo. What can he do? Dark Ritual into, I believe that's a Royal Assassin. Great creature in this format. Let's see if it stays alive. And yes, it does actually. There's an Iron Claw Orc. For a moment, I thought that would be a Fireball, but it's an Iron Claw Orc. So that means Edo's in the clear. Can he find a land here? And he's just passing turn. No lands here for Edo. That is pretty troublesome. And there's a tap for two. And it's a bit of glare there, but that's a fireball. And then the attack for two from Tom. Edo dropping to 18 here. And he needs to find land. Ay, ay, ay. Edo's passing turn again. Let's hope Tom cannot do anything this turn. Except for attack, of course, with the Iron Claw Orcs, giving hopefully Edo a little bit of breathing space. He's on 16 now, but look at that. He's going to cast something. And there's the Granite Gargoyle. 2-2 two, two Flyer for one red. You can give it plus one, uh, plus zero, plus one. And there Edo is showing his hand. And I believe we saw Hypnotic Spectres in there and Ice Storms. He really needs another land. And look at him. He's kind of touching his library, hoping for lands. And now he's being hit for four damage, dropping down to, I believe, 12. And there we see another creature, and that looks like it's another Granite Gargoyle. It's really hard to see with the glare, though, but I believe it's a Granite Gargoyle. And look at that hand. Double Lightning Bolt for Tom. That means an extra six damage. So next turn, it could be done for Edo. Edo really needs to find a land, play something like a blocker. A White Knight. Uh, I'm sorry, a Black Knight, of course. He's playing with Black and Green, but a Black Knight would kind of help him. Blocking the Iron Claw Orc, at least. And of course, Edo doesn't know that Tom has that double bolt in hand. And that means it could be over next turn. He's going through his hand again. What can he do here? If he doesn't have land, there's not much he can do. He can only pass. And that's exactly what's happening here. Passing turn to Tom. And is Tom going to take this first game here at round one of the Dwarven Warriors Cup? He's attacking here, dropping to six. Will we now see the double bolt? Two red being tapped. Double bolt. And that's it. That's it here, and that means first game for Tom, but we've got more games to come, of course. Best of three here, so we're going to let these players sideboard, and um, I think sideboarding is going to be very interesting. Um, I believe Edo is playing with Gloom, so Gloom could be a really good inclusion for Edo, even though he didn't see a lot of red here in, that, in uh, white, I mean, in this first game. And Tom, I wonder if he has Karma. I actually don't know, but maybe a Northern Paladin would be kind of deadly as well for Edo. So there are definitely also options for Tom here in his sideboard. And uh, looking forward to see those cards in action in game number two. Game number two here. And let's see, what can we expect? And there was the hand, quick hand shown. I think I saw Savannah lines there in the opener. 
but no planes for Tom here. So he's just playing a basic mountain passing turn there. We see a swamp by Edo and no action. So the first game we had a lot of quick action. Now it's taking the players a little bit longer, but there is the Savannah Lions. And let's see what Edo can do here. Had a bit of a mana issues in that game one, but it looks like he's off to a better start now, taking care of the red mana. And I'm probably worried about all that direct damage and hoping to deploy perhaps a Hypnotic Spectre next turn if he can find a second Swamp. But look at that, another Savannah Lions here. So Tom is putting on the pressure, but he cannot find his third land drop. And there's that second Swamp from Edo. So is he going to play... Oh, actually, is there an... Oh, interesting. This card, it's really hard to see, but it's actually a Gloom. And that means that Tom now has to pay three extra for all his white spells. And that's pretty brutal because he's already low on mana. He does find a Mountain, though, so maybe he can cast an Iron Claw Orc. But it looks like he can't. He's just passing on here. And I believe the players are now kind of moving their cards a little bit so that we don't have too much of, of a glare situation here. And we can all enjoy the cards. And it's now Edo's turn. I mean, he is on 14, even though uh, Tom is very low on land. Look at that, another Ice Storm. Ooh, and things are, are looking better for Edo, but, but he does need something to block those lines with. I mean, he is on 14, he's gonna drop to 10 here. And uh, Tom just passing turn, cannot find lands. But for somebody who's so low on lands, he's actually doing a pretty good job. And four tap, there is a Juggernaut. So that is a pretty powerful card because it can now block Tom. So Tom will probably not attack. And remember, because of that Gloom, even if Tom has a Disenchant or a Swords in hand, he cannot use it because of the Gloom tax. He has to pay three extra for white spells. So that's just not going to happen here. Untapping here by Edo. And he's going to attack with the Juggernaut. He does only have one card in hand. So as soon as Tom can start deploying spells, it's a whole different game again. And look at that. Tom deciding not to block but attack. That's actually a pretty good decision. Counting his cards now. It looks like he's got eight cards in hand. Ah, and that's really, really tough. You don't want to discard. So discarding a beautiful Sarah Angel here passing turn but I mean things could be worse for Tom he's he's got Edo on six here and Edo has to attack with a juggernaut and casting a hypnotic specter and he's probably gonna block next turn with the hypnotic specter and you don't want to do that trade for the Savannah Alliance but his life total is so low I kind of feel like he has to and of course Tom is gonna attack he's gonna block one and that means Edo is taking two damage gonna drop to four here and he's getting dangerously close to getting killed and he really needs another creature. A giant spider would be really nice right now. Not sure if he's playing those actually. That it would really help him or just a wall of wood would be great against the Savannah Lion. And that is the nice thing about Alpha Beta, like completely different cards all of a sudden become useful in this format. A card like Frozen Shade for example can be quite powerful. Now let's see what Tom's going to do. Counting his cards again, he, he has to discard, but at the same time he's winning. This is a very interesting game. Going through his cards, putting away a Granite Gargoyle and actually not attacking because he's on five, of course. I kind of missed that for a moment and now he has to block and things are looking great for Edo at the moment. And playing a lot of elves, passing turn. And Tom is finally finding red mana. Does he have a bolt or something else to take care? Perhaps Shatter to take care of that Juggernaut. And there is a Fire Year Bone with Swords to Plowseers, of course, because he's playing three extra, paying three extra because of the, um, the Gloom here. And that does mean that Edo gains five more life, so he's going to go up to nine, which is actually quite nice. But then again, he's lost his Juggernaut, probably going to hit him now for one damage. That means that Tom's going to drop to four. And I mean, things are, are looking... Oh, and there is a Giant Grove. Look at that. He's actually going to one another Lanaware else, but the hand of Edo is now empty. And let's see if Tom can survive this. He's on one life. If he can play a fireball on both of these targets, that would be pretty nice. I think that is one of his outs here. 
What else can he do? He's playing a Benalish hero. Ooh, does he have a lightning bolt in hand? Attacking with both, blocking one on the Benelish, playing a bolt on the other. He does have a lightning bolt. That means he's still alive. I thought this game would go to Edo here, but he's still alive. There we see a royal assassin by Edo and a second red for Tom. Playing an Iron Claw Orc. And remember, Iron Claw Orc can block creatures with power of one. So it can actually block the Royal Assassin. So Edo is probably not going to attack here. And we see another Lunawer Elf. And remember, Edo is in top deck mode. And Tom has a bunch of cards. And there is a Granite Gargoyle. Of course, Edo still has that Royal to protect himself and his life total. But he really needs to kind of close this before Tom is taking control over of this game. Because I'm sure he's going to draw into some direct damage, take care of the Royal and put some pressure on. Actually, he's playing... Is that another Swords to Plowsiers? I think it is. It's hard to see because of the glare. Yes, it is. It's a Swords to Plowsiers. That means Edo is going to gain another life. But he, he's not really happy with this because now the floodgates are open. And Tom is actually attacking with the Iron Claw Orc using the um, Granite Gargoyle as a blocker. And that's of course a very smart decision because what Edo could possibly do is play a Giant Grove over the Lanawer Elves and attack and then the Iron Claw Orc is not able to block the Lanawer Elves anymore. Because remember Iron Claw Orc can only block creatures with power one or less. So it's not the best blocker and that's quite an understatement here. And there's another red for Tom. Tom is really taking over this game. Wow, 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 another Swords to Plowshares, finding all his Swords to Plowshares. That means he gains one, goes to nine, but he also takes four, so drops to five. And Edo was there. I mean, Tom was on, what, one life? After the Giant Grove over the Lanawer. I mean, can he find something like a Drain Life? Or there's an Anime Debt. What is he going to, to get back here? Is it going to be, it's going to be the Hypnotic Spectre. And, uh, I mean, that is... An interesting choice because the Hypnotic Spectre, because of enemy dead, it gets minus one, minus zero. So the Hypnotic Spectre is a one-two flyer. And it's kind of hard here for Edo to really make a make a good choice because there are not really a lot of useful creatures in his bin. He can take the Royal, but that would mean he would take four more damage next turn. And that's probably why he's choosing the Hypnotic Spectre. But the Hypnotic Spectre is a one-two because of that minus one, minus O from enemy dead. So I wonder what he's gonna do now. If he's gonna let the damage go, or actually. Tom cannot attack with both of the creatures, of course. But there we see a disenchant, and that means that the hippie is going back to the graveyard. And uh, wow, 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 wow. This is bad news for Edo. Hypnotic Spectre will go back to the graveyard, and that means four more damage for Tom here. And what I wanted to say is that it actually makes sense that he brought back the Hypnotic Spectre, because, because of the Hypnotic Spectre, Tom couldn't attack with the Granite Gargoyle, so it actually stopped two damage. So that was a very good play from Edo. Unfortunately, there was a disenchant from Tom. There we see a regrowth. This is a, this is a tough match. I kind of like it, you know. But is there anything useful for Edo? I don't think there is, because, because he can only can get back one creature playing out the Hypnotic Spectre. That's it. That's it. And that means that Tom is actually going to take this second game as well. Let's see. He's going to untap. He's going to finish it. Gonna attack. And uh, that that's it. That's the end game. Unfortunately, we couldn't see the Wheel of Fortune being played out. I mean, that's such a beautiful, amazing, stunning card. I do believe these players are going to play a game number three just for fun. <laughs> because apparently, because Thomas, you can see it here on the screen, Thomas is already the winner winning this one. 0-2, it's a best of three. But stick around because both these players are going to play game number three. Game number three here at the Dwarven Warriors Cup. And uh, let's see. I mean, I hope Edo can at least get in one win. I think his deck deserves it. Uh, we'll have to see. He was so close, though, in the second game. I mean, uh, Tom being just on one. And I think uh, Edo played very well attacking the, the mana base. But the problem, of course, is if he can't finish it and then your opponent starts drawing lands again. I mean, he, he does have a full hand. Let's look at this opening hand here. So I fireball, a lightning bolt, enough lands for Tom. Looks like a very solid uh, opening hand here for Tom. Let's see what Edo can do. Of course, he gets to start again because he lost. So can he find another quick start with a Lanawer? And yes, he can. 
So that's a great opener here for Edo. And maybe it's nice to note here, ah, of course, that lightning bolt from Tom taking care of the lawn rails. It's nice to note here that the playmate you see on Edo's side, the Preacher, it's one that he actually made himself. He drew the Preacher, so it's quite an artist. Beautiful playmate. And um, let's take a look, regrowth on the lawn rails. And there we see a soul ring, and then the soul ring and a mountain into a granite gargoyle. So again, it's a really good start here for Tom. And there's a gloom again. So that gloom is not great for Tom, but the granite gargoyle is there. He's got that soul ring to pay a big part of the tax from the gloom, so it's not too bad. And Edo dropping to 18. I do like I do like the tactic of playing Gloom with Ice Storms. I think it's pretty nice. And uh, sorting his lance out a little bit. Remember, he still has that Lanawar Elves on board playing it out now. And I wonder if he's got some kind of big creature in hand. Maybe a Sengir Vampire or something that he wants to use the mana from the Lanawar Elves for. And there is a Disenchant. And because of that Soul Ring, Tom can pay that extra ta uh, tax. And remember, he now has enough lands to actually cast a Sarah Angel, and that would mean serious problems for Edo here. He's first going to swing in for two. That means... Oh, interesting. There we see a Berserk. So that means that the Grand Gargoyle is going to deal double damage, but it's also going to die at the end of the turn, actually, I believe. Or is it the end of combat? I believe the end of turn. So by putting it in the bin... Tom is kind of indicating that his turn is done, but he's not done yet. I mean, he's going to play some more, and he's playing a Swords to Plowsiers here on the Lanarel. So Lanarel is dead, and there we see a Juggernaut. And that's pretty good news here for Edo that Juggernaut can deal some damage, but Tom has a lot of answers to the Juggernaut. Disenchant, Swords, whatnot, Fireball, that's another one. And I think that is what make what makes Tom's deck so strong. That is what makes the red-white combination so strong. Is you have swords to plows here, so you have lightning bolts, you have fireballs, and we're seeing it all here from Tom. So I think maybe this deck could get could reach uh, pretty far in the tournament today. This deck from Tom. There we see a block here, the Lanor Elves on the Savannah Alliance, and oh beautiful! We see the Wheel of Fortune being cast. That is fantastic. Look at that beautiful Wheel of Fortune. Wow, and Wheel of Fortune, one of my favorite cards because I, you know, I think it's it's a strong card, but it's also a fair card. I mean, you've got to pay three at sorcery speed. Your opponent's gonna untap with the, with the new hand. Obviously, you have the advantage of being able to time when you want to play it. But um, yeah, I like it. I like it, and the art. I mean, the art is amazing on uh, on Wheel of Fortune. Now let's see what Tom is going to do. Tapping some more, playing two Benelli heroes here, and of course, those Benelli heroes they go quite well with the Savannah Alliance, because now he can attack with a double band, so he can actually make it into a 4-3 creature. So that's quite interesting. And there we see, it's actually hard to see. I think it's a Soul Ring as well. And this card, again, it's really difficult for me to see. I think it's a Gloom. Yeah, it's a Gloom there. And there is an Ice Storm. So wow, a full turn here by Edo. And that is, of course, what you get after a resolved Wheel of Fortune. So that is pretty cool. And he's attacking here with the 4-3, so 4 damage. So despite the fact that Edo did quite a lot in that turn, he didn't really take care of the creatures of Tom. And I think one of the things that would really help this black and green deck is a Pestilence. Maybe he has one, I don't know, I haven't seen the deck lists. But that would really be helpful against decks like the one that Tom is playing. And there is another green land here, another forest. Tapping four, casting a Juggernaut. Oh, look at this, instill energy on the Juggernaut. That means he can attack first turn and playing a Giant Grove and playing a Berserk. Oh, ho, amazing here, what a play. What a play! And this is the magic you want to see. And wow! And that means 16 damage in one go. That is amazing. That is just crazy. That is crazy. Unfortunately though for Edo, Tom is still on 20, so that means he's going to drop to 4 life. 
And I mean, we've seen that before because we saw that in game number two as well, where Edo actually had Tom on one life and he couldn't finish it. But what a play here by Edo. This is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And there we see another Banalish hero here hitting the board. And despite this fantastic play, and look at that, Edo is actually getting the point here just, just for that play. And I think he deserves it, but just, <laughs> just because of that play, but he's not gonna win this one, unfortunately. Sometimes sometimes the cards are just not falling in your way and, and, and the puzzle just doesn't fit. And I think that's the case here for Edo versus Tom. Tom winning this match 0-3 oh, and uh, the deck is looking very, very strong. It, this could be definitely a contender to get very far in the tournament. Definitely uh, a top eight contender for me here, but what a beautiful play by Edo. Let's look, actually, let's look back at that play and see what happens. So he's playing the Juggernaut casting the install energy, attacking with it, and then putting over a uh, giant grove, making it an eight, six creature, and then casting the berserk, making it 16 in power. And uh, yeah, that's just an amazing play. So beautiful, Edo, thank you for showing us this fantastic magic here from the Dwarven Warriors Cup um, in the Netherlands. We're actually in a place called Forthuizen, and uh, this tournament is hosted by Erwin and, um, Great guy, great guy, beautiful tournament. So thank you for organizing this. Thank you, Edo and Tom, for sharing this beautiful match with us. Now, if you want to see more alpha beta action, stay tuned to the channel because uh, there's more coming. Every week I will post another match from the Dwarven Warriors Cup. So there's definitely more to come. And I also have the finals for you eventually in these series. So for now, thank you for watching. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by liking, subscribing if you're not a sub yet, sharing uh, this game and all the other games on, on your socials that really helps uh, leave a comment tell me what you think of this format what do you think of the decks i think they look absolutely stunning um, you can also help the show financially by the way you can become a channel member if you want to and you can also become a patreon so you can actually join our patreon program and there's probably a link uh, showing up right now you can click on the link that will take you to my patreon page and there you can read all about becoming a patron of Timmy Talks and all the benefits that that has. Talking about Patreon, let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at all the fantastic, beautiful patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fik het als somba kan zien.